let's say um, I've got a $30,000 loan and now my vault has went up 40x and it's worth $400,000. I'm at risk if I don't pay that off and that coin drops. It's got to drop completely down, all the way down way below. In other words, it's not a moving stop loss. It's a stop loss at what I went in at, right? Four zeros and a six. It's, you're, it, you're, it has you're, to drop. You're, you're, yeah. So if you borrowed $2,000 and you know, it does a 2000 also does like a 2000% increase, you still only owe $2 to pay back the loan. So you're actually, your risk has gone down immensely. So you can just more loan or a more USDL at that point, just mint more as a loan. Yeah. So I guess my question on that is I am not at risk. No one's going to, uh, could liquidate me and take my $200,000 worth of it. It's, it'll never happen now because the coin is well, all right. You can monitor the price of pulse, but I mean, the biggest trap that I believe CC, they did research on Ethereum. The biggest drop that they saw in one day was around 63%. So that's where they kind of came up with, if you say at 1,000% collateral, which is very high, like not everybody's going to be doing that. I think the average rate on liquidity is like 200 to 250 right now. Um, if you're at 1,000%, that puts you from an 89% drop in. So that gives you time to react. I mean, it's not going to happen one day. You'll have time to either pay off on or add more pulse to your vault. Usually it's going to be dust. Yeah, because we both, everybody knows this, is, this chain is going to grow and it may take five years to get there or 10 to get in that staking pool and be able to to you know start earning those fees that apr so but yeah right, you know, everybody's scared of the word liquidation yeah it sucks but like the nice thing is you never have to pay back you got the loan on front end so you got something for what you put in so you put in eleven thousand dollars all right you want a ten thousand dollar loan you have to put minimum eleven thousand dollars of pulse so you never have to pay that back if you were liquidated. If the price drops it below that thousand dollars, you lost a thousand dollars worth of value because you, your pulse is. But you got that ten thousand dollars on the front. End. So if price drops a lot and you still have that ten thousand dollars, but somebody just held pulse, maybe their value of pulse goes down to five thousand dollars. But you got the money on the front end. If you still have that ten thousand dollars, you could buy back in and double your token allocation. So yeah, you might have created a taxable you know event but you could also double up on your tokens as well so it's not as bad as like a true liquidation you're not losing everything because you got something on the front end i got you which is exactly what we would do we would take the loan out and reinvest it in the other coin i mean there's a lot right. of times where you get stock and you wish you you only lost 10 percent on it but it keeps going down so it, that's the advantage of it like it, once it all clicks and you actually see it work in your head it, it makes mm -hmm. complete sense but sometimes yeah, it just I, takes a little. I think you got a grasp on it, though. Yeah, that's where I'm at with it, and I appreciate your help. I don't know if you played on Testnet at all. Just go log on Testnet and just try using, you know, game alone and list, know how all the buttons work. You can just... I played around a little bit with just claiming and stuff, but I'm watching the vids, and I'm starting more to understand it. Um, yep. I understand, though, that, that if, you're, if you do have loan tokens, those loan tokens enable you to receive fees from the loans being taken. So I understand that you're not in a hurry. But if you would like to get those fees, you would want to stake those as soon as possible in the staking pool. If it was my bag, 100%. Well, and therein lies a question that, uh, thank you for that, because here's a question I didn't have the answer to from my partner. And he's like, uh, well, how many people do you think are going to take a loan out when when um, the price of Pulse is so low? And let, I'm like, let, me, let, let me explain it like this, though. Um, the price is a little bit irrelevant other than like the total valuation, what, what people have available to them. But there's some juicy earned or excuse me, loan token rewards that are emitted out to stability depositors. All right. So so people who take uh stable coins, USDL and drop them in the stability pool, they earn the emission of those loan tokens. But the only way, the only way to get your hands on any of those stable coins to be able to get those is by minting them. Because none of them exist um, unless, you know, five minutes after the protocol exists, <laughs> the only way to get some is to make them, to mint them into existence. Nobody's going to look at that stability pool emitting all those loan tokens and say, oh, I'm just going to let that one guy who's over there or those five guys over there earn all those tokens and have a, a thousand percent APY. No, that's too, uh, that's too tempting. So people absolutely will take their pulse mint some stable coins and go dive in and start to dilute those guys i got you makes sense anytime and anytime there's a mint of usdl 
there's a fee shaved off of some of that USDL and it goes straight to the stakers of the loan token. So, okay. All right. So really what I need to do is I need to be in the pool. I need to be in the loan stake and then I need to take a loan out myself. I need to get my head around. Having, having funds sitting on the sidelines during the first week of a protocol especially when it's a single asset pool, right? This isn't some LP that you're putting together where you fear impermanent loss or anything like that. Everything here is a single asset pool. So if you put in 100,000 loan tokens, you're going to get 100,000 loan tokens back out two years from now. So so, so there's really no risk there. So, so keeping uh, money on the sidelines waiting for things to shake down uh, may not be the best play. I... I it, I would put my USDL in the stability pool and put the stake, the, the, the loan token in the staking pool. That's just me. All right. I appreciate you guys' help. You give me a lot to think about. I'm going to start going through this thing more uh, in detail, go through the entire, because yeah. in the long run, this is going to change things. I, I feel like I'm a, I was on the verge of screwing up, getting wrecked, if you want. I, I was dump my, what coins I had in, in the pulse and, and take it and go. And I think that's a mis huge mistake. The normal bridge work. Richard's uh, created Bridge Works. Uh, he's got a list of links to access it on PulseRamp.com. I think it is PulseRamp.com, and then you can choose one of those IPF links, IPFS links, and uh, bridge that way. It's not the only way. Uh, there's other bridges. Yeah, there's a have, few ways now, isn't there? Yeah, there's I mean, couple, some couple of them different. have uh, lower, you know, uh, different liquidity depths. You know, so you got to look out for that. Of course, there's um, PortalXSwap.io. Uh, watch the liquidity depth there. You know, if you're coming in with a big bag, you might not get the best rate. And you might not want to use it. Yeah, that There's just depends. To... Do you want to bring that USDC over and then swap it once it's over on Pulse Chain? Or do you want to do a, a one transaction that takes the USDC from Ethereum and gives you Pulse over on Pulse Chain? That's, that's kind of the question you want to ask. Well, really, just uh, in preparation for liquid loans launching. I'm dry powder on the Pulse Chain blockchain do you want to keep your dry powder in pulse or do you want to keep it in stables well i guess what would be better for liquid loans you know in preparation that that's your call bud that can't be my call sounds like pulse would probably be the best but in my opinion right now pulse is a pretty good price i made some of those moves today myself um as have a bunch of other people because there's some pretty decent green candles on pulse chain right now so it, it's kind of your call but if you don't have a direction maybe giving yourself a, a percentage of each is a good idea all right here's a side question another question should we what would be the benefits of having two different vaults on two different wallets instead of just keeping it all in one vault on one wallet running different strategies on different wallets also security is kind of cool having that especially if you're running two different Hardware wallets on each one of those vaults is a, is a good idea. So if you were going to have two vaults, I might have two different hardware wallets. Or at least different passphrases. Correct. Yeah, that's a good idea. I guess, too, on the MCR pool, we'll get our cone, our loan tokens pretty quickly. I've been told it's that's been minutes. <laughs> that's why I'm in here. But... Being USDL paired to Pulse can take those LP tokens and stake them in liquid loans and, and earn some earn tokens for uh, like uh, 42 days, all right? So for that to be functioning, the team needs to go create that pool and get it get it started at least, all right? From there, the community is going to stock that pool because it's way too tempting to leave all those earned tokens on the table and just like <laughs> have a few guys earning them all, right? It's super tempting. So a portion of the people who are minting USDL will go into the stability pool because it's easy because uh, that's what is most common. But there's going to be other guys who say, you know what, I'm going to go over into the uh, this liquidity pool with some of my Pulse and some USDL, and I'm going to put them in there so I can get these juicy to uh, loan token rewards. All right? That's where the liquidity from USDL uh, starts from. Uh, there will be, later on, and separate from anything that... Liquid Loans uh, starts, th there's absolutely going to be other pools. There's going to be teams that uh, create their own tokens, and that team just happens to like USDL, so they're going to pair their thing to USDL. There's going to be other DEXs that you may have heard about, like PHUX or 9mm or 9mm and all these other ones that are going to, people are going to take some of this USDL liquidity and go put it into their pools over there. 
And those pools may even have rewards of their own that they uh, emit out. So just keep an eye on that. Um, in regards to the loan token itself, is that going to have tradability? Will that have liquidity pools? And the the team's never going to tell us, right? They're not obligated to do anything. Nobody should get excited and and think that they're going to make a, uh, a multi-hundred-thousand-dollar liquidity pool or even multi-million-dollar liquidity pool just so everyone can dump and, and run away with all that money. It, it It's not their obligation to do so. The token is simply a token that's designed to be staked for the fees. If there's people who wish to sell it, well, some some people are going to have to pony up as a community and go liquidity provide with those. And maybe there's opportunity in doing that as well, right? There's absolutely going to be people looking to buy some of these loan tokens. Um, they are kind of, um, you know, besides anybody who's able to claim some, um, nobody else out there, no of these later adopters can get their hands on them. Unless they're in the stability pool, or as I said, that liquidity pool, and they're, they're staking those, uh, like that's the only way they're able to get them unless they do go buy them. So for those people that do own some loan tokens, there may be opportunity in you participating in community-built liquidity pools because there should be other people looking to buy those tokens. But that's not necessarily going to be something managed at all by the team. After the team hits the launch button on this, the whole protocol is pretty much completely community driven. All right. So keep that in mind. Uh, you're likely not going to be able to just dump the moment uh, the protocol goes live. Um, it probably wouldn't be wise to do so anyway. Not financial advice, but uh, don't don't expect anything from anybody else. This is a community project as soon as the launch uh, button is hit. Yeah, Hello. I can. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so uh, <clears throat> like you were saying, with the uh, like with the people who uh, there will have to be some pool on Parsec created where USDL is going to be uh, participating in because I, I mean I don't know I mean like if I loan if I make the vault and get the USDL and I'm one of those let's say which I'm not who wants to straight away sell it for something else I should be able to do that. You, you got to be careful though. So so check it out. When Liquidity okay. launched, they launched with ten thousand US uh, LUSD. All right, it took a little yeah. bit of time, a couple of days or whatever, for the community to mint some LUSD and go add them to those pools and build that pool up to uh, you know a few million dollars worth of uh, liquidity. So you can kind of expect the same thing here. That pool's going to start pretty small. People are going to have to mint. People are going to have to go add. So if you're looking to mint and then just go swap out of it immediately, uh, you're probably going to get a really horrible rate in the first couple, uh, at least probably the first day or two. Watch the size and the depth of that pool. That the, that price of that token is going to move around quite a bit. It is it is a stable coin, but let's uh, break down what actually keeps it stable. The redemption mechanism. At any time after the first two weeks, not during the first 14 days, but after, um, anybody who has USDL can click a redeem bunk button inside the protocol, and that will burn their USDL that they're, re <coughs> they're redeeming and give them $1 worth of pulse for each of those, all right? That mechanism is extremely important. It does a number of things for the stability, pool, uh, for the stability of the, the stablecoin. But it's turned off for the first two weeks. So after the first two weeks, you can expect that if, if the price of the stablecoin is like 50 cents because somebody dumped a bunch and it moved that ratio in a liquidity pool somewhere, well, the next guy is going to see it cheap and he's going to buy it up all the way back up to a dollar because he knows either that he's just got a bunch of cheap stable coins or he, he, he knows that he's, he can redeem that for a dollar he can arbitrage that and, and, and make a bunch of money instantly. But that's turned off for the first two weeks. So you can expect some volatility for those first two weeks. I would suggest that people don't let that volatility scare them too much. Even though it's turned off for the first two weeks, like if I see USDL cheaper than a dollar, I'm going to buy some. I'm just going to hold it. I no, may liquidity that's provide exactly with it. What I, what I wanted to actually say that yeah. I'm, I'm actually one of those who want to buy it 
as soon as possible, yeah. even though it costs 50 cents, possibly even if it costs like $1.20, yeah. uh, because I want to put it in the in the stability pool as soon as possible. I don't know, maybe with the money, I might actually scramble and with the pulse being so low, I should be probably okay, like with 150% collateral, yeah, but I'd rather do the, the other way. So what I was trying to say, like, uh, there will be a pool pretty quickly after the launch and I'll be buying it. <laughs> Be careful though, so, because uh, like, <clears throat> if the pool starts at ten thousand USDL, it doesn't take like a hundred, two hundred bucks, and like you just move the price, to, you know, ten, twenty percent on yourself. So I just know, be careful. The arbitrage works no, the yeah, other way too, British, where yeah. no, yeah, no, where no, if, it, if, it's, right. if it's if it's if it's like a ten dollars stable coin. Well, um, no, that's that's too far. <laughs> it's really, it's a little gay, you know. Just yeah. mint the heck out of them. Be watching that very close. At yeah, the lowest collateral yeah, help and go dump them. I mean, because the price is whatever the ratio is, right? The liquidity pool has no idea it's supposed to be a stable coin. It just knows this many of this coin get this many of this other coin. But the unique part about liquid loans is after that first two weeks, they are redeemable for a dollar's worth of pulse, each one of them. So it's you make money by cool. repegging this coin. Yeah. If, if, if the stable coin is cheaper than a dollar, you can make money. If it's more expensive than a dollar, you can also make money. I don't know uh, if people heard me, but like curve, convex, balancer, these sort of things, stable coins paired together kind of keep each other pegged at a, at a dollar. You'll see some of this on Pulse Chain too. Absolutely. People are going to pair stable coins to other stable coins. And if you can trade, uh, you know, 0.9 of one stable coin and get a full one of the other, well, people are going to do that. They're going to do it back and forth constantly stacking up uh you know stable coin dust and, and making their quantity go up and they're it it's actually pegging the value of all the stable coins back to a dollar because they're doing that constantly we'll see all okay. kinds of arbitrage